Albert Macau from Federal University of São Paulo in FESP. This is our campus. I'm from Brazil. We are located in São José dos Campos, which is 100 kilometers away from São Paulo. And today I'm going to talk about topology that favors synchronization in energy transmission network. So those are my co-workers. This is Juliana Lacerda. She is my PhD student. This is Jussara Dias. She is also my PhD student. And this is Dr. Celso Freitas, my former PhD student who is now at Ericsson. So, we are going to talk about power grid. Power grid is built to transmit energy. We are actually interested in this in uh, transmission power grid, which means that we have a system, a distributed system, in which we have generators, uh, we have uh, and power lines, and also we have loads. And the goal is to take energy from the generators, where we have a lot of generators in this network, and transmit it until get uh, the loads on the distribution centers uh, that will, after that, transmit the energy uh, inside the town, the neighbors, and whatever. Uh, so this power grid, it's a very large distributed system and actually it involves a lot of regions and they are inter interconnected. For example, here in Brazil, we have a very, very, very large power grid, totally interconnected. And uh, it means that the generator all together are uh, send energy to the systems so that we make this uh, robust and uh, then can operate properly to feed the energy to all the country. So, uh, as we have several generators, uh, this power grid to work properly, all the generators and all the loads, they must have working so that we have a synchronization, a phase locking. It means that uh, our, this, all these generators that you can see here, and uh, the transmission lines and the loads, this is the center of this, the, the uh, company that uh, run this system in Brazil, uh, they must work in a synchronized way so that we have a phase locking uh, in the system to work properly. Uh, so, uh, usually the system which is uh, considered to be one of the largest one ever built for the, uh, in the uh, nowadays uh, age, uh, they work properly and they are very st stable under perturbation. Actually, they are made so that they be, can be reliable and can reboot if you is, for example, one generator does not work properly, or if one transmission line uh, is disconnected. Um, so this is what we have uh, supporting that. All the generators, they must work so that one to compensate another and to supply enough energy to all the system. However, so this is a nice picture from Brazil at night, and you can see uh, the lights of the main town in Brazil. However, from time to time, we face a problem, a blackout. And this is not very often, for example. This one is, is the last one that happened in Brazil, a very large one, is what happens in 2009. And uh, it was a problem in the transmission line that, uh, that uh, take the energy from Itaipu, which is one of the, the second largest power uh, source, power generator in the world, and they drop because of some problems. And it, there is a cascade, and all the uh, generators were disconnected, so it resulted in power grid. So it's not uh, very often, it's very rare, so that uh, we, I, for example, uh, 
remember when this happened what you are doing at that time so but uh, the problem that we face is a little bit uh, different now because uh, what happened is that in the previous time we have a very static uh, organization of a power grid we have like a generators and load the transmission line and uh, the way to design that to make it robust uh, it was developed and uh, it was considered to be a very well known and proper solved problem but now the, the things change because we are having in the system uh, subsystem generators small one that we can have in your neighborhoods or even nearby your home to send to uh, generate your own energy for example we can have a, a small white new photovoltaic roof in private homes and several other different source of energy connected to the your neighborhood or even to your home so for example here we have a photovoltaic uh, generator in your roof or a small one new and also we have this uh, this uh, well, uh, system this uh, generator uh, that does not consume uh, fuel for example they are very well uh, for uh, our time but the problem is that they don't work all the time so we face situation where uh, we have this small system feeding or uh, working properly and suddenly this does not work anymore it means that when this happens we need to send uh, the energy from the generators in order to keep the energy on all the places in our network it means that we have a smart grid it means a power grid where some systems they sometimes work as a generator or the time works as, as a load and we do not know uh, in advance when this happened so it means that uh, you can imagine a situation where all this small or uh, uh, generator does not work and then we do, there is a perturbation in the system that can result in a collapse so our problem the problem of our days is how to design a network uh, uh, that face this problem of uh, instability that may happen and it keep working properly uh, so to take a look at this problem we are going to consider this model this model is a very nice model that allow us to work in uh, to understand the topology and the constraints related to that this is made out of the Kuramoto model it is like a Kuramoto like oscillator but it's a second order Kuramoto oscillator and then we have uh, phase frequency we have the power uh, that feeds a specific point of our network this is the maximal power transfer capacity between two nodes and this is a network it means this is a joint matrix which means that it is one if uh, node j is connected to, to node k is zero otherwise it's a nonlinear system but it reproduces dynamically in the structural properties of the power grid it means that we can use that to understand general features of the system including the scenario of power grids so what is our goal here our goal is the following uh, we want to have to find considering that we have a number of loads a number of generators and some of them that are generators one at a time and a load in the other time to found in our network the lowest number of edges that favor frequency synchronization that allow us to build reliable network not expensive that face with these problems of change but use the, low, the, the low 
law number, the relative law number of edges to handle uh, the request of energy. So here is the network again, the adjacent matrix that take uh, in consideration the network that we are using and the maximum capacity of our uh, power, of the power line that we are using. So how are we going to do that? Before that, we need to understand how we're going to measure synchronization. We're going to use to, uh, to uh, measure, two way to measure that. First of them is using the, between the other parameter. The other parameter taking consideration if we have uh, synchronization or not. If, for example, all the angles here are zero, it means that this is one, and we have uh, one, it means we have frequency synchronization. Otherwise, if we just considering uh, the same uh, uh, the same parameter, but not integrate from all of them, but considering pairs, we can see if you have uh, actually phase locking in them, average all of them, and if it is one, we have phase locking, and if it is below one, we do not have phase locking. So, using these two indexes, we are going, we are able to find if we have a power grid that synchronized or not, that working properly or not. And how we're going to find that uh, the lowest of our, our power grid with this small number of edges? We're going to take in consideration this edge snapping method. Uh, it is actually an evolution optimization method or adaptive strategies that uh, can work, it can be integrated until it get an equilibrium. And the equilibrium and it means that uh, we have a situation that our network is properly to operate. But anyhow, uh, so we are going to consider this equation and we'll have this potential and we are going to consider the double L potential and in our scenario, KMN, it means the edges. So uh, this method actually integrate that. And we are going to use this double well potential. It means that we are going to start it with zero, no edges. And as it evolves, it may end in one. It means that if it is one, we have edges between node one, N and N. Those are the initial condition and it is the, the result of the being forcing but but this force which means the difference of angles between that are uh, that are uh, actually acting on the system okay and, and so out of that we're going to find out if they are connection or not so to solve our problem we are going to solve those equations simultaneously those is the equation of our power grid those is the equation of evolution, optimization, and where and I am and K and N are the are the elements of this adjacent matrix. So we're going to both integrate in parallel, and out of that, if it is one, we are going to know, know that there is an edge. If it is zero, it's not. So how we're going to solve the problem using this following method? First of all, we're going to consider in S differential initial conditions and in S network topologies will be generated out of this in S different, different initial conditions. And uh, for each, uh, each node, uh, we are going to take into account, we are going to add the number of times that out of those, out of those equation we have it's, it, the results indicate that we have an edge between them. So, uh, you, you, uh, after the end, we are going to have this number, which means which indicates the probability of uh, considering all the cases we have a connection between M and N. And we are going to select to keep. Uh, we are going to have a threshold, and when uh, this uh, FMN is larger than the threshold, for example, here. Uh, we have a connection in our network. Otherwise, if this value that we had obtained is less, we consider that we do not have a network. So using that and this threshold, we can find uh, a good
good a network that fulfill our goals that work properly with a smart grid with the last number of edges between them. Let us take an example. Here we apply to a very small system with six nodes, the results we already know, and uh, we, those are uh, the generators, and uh, what we saw here is that connect, if you have loads connect to a generator, it favors synchronization, okay? And also, so network topology are connected, those have the similar network frequencies, uh, initially favor synchronization. Then we apply to this network with 30 nodes, and uh, this is a very well-known uh, network that is provided for IEEE, IEEE that is used to test, and out of that we found this result, this very interesting picture. And what we can see here is the same results, right? that the probability of edge connecting nodes with dissimilar um, natural frequency is higher, which indicates that we will present in the final technology, and uh, if you will interconnect nodes with different frequency, we favor the synchronization, right? Uh, as we can see here. Yeah. So here we have this threshold. And in the same result, we, we see the nodes degree uh, related to nat natural frequency, and we can see here are the hubs, okay? And uh, we, we see that the hubs are ones whose natural frequency is near the extremes, and uh, we see that they are also with well disconnected natural frequency, the difference of them are larger. So if you take in consideration, compare the network that we've got, using this ES method, we uh, also uh, design a network with the same number of nodes, but using actually a random network, uh, um, and uh, we compare the results. So here you can see what happened for those two indexes for this ES methodology, and this is for a random network, and we see that it really favors the synchronization. It synchronizes early uh, with a transmission line with less capability. And less capability it means that we don't need to expend a lot of money to have uh, a, 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 a transmission line uh, who, uh, who support very high uh, current, okay? And it's very efficient and support the, uh, the synchronization of the network. So, our main conclusion are the following. Second order Kunamoto model is a convenient model to simulate the behavior of power grid. Consumer connect to generators favor synchronization, and uh, we need to have connection between uh, nodes that have a very dissimilar uh, frequencies. And this method is very good to generate good topology that favors synchronization with lower values of uh, maximum power transmission. Okay? And uh, this result was published in this article that we can find online. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, this.